Hello, my sweet potatoes. Welcome back. It's Michelle, and today we're spending a full day at Tokyo Disney Sea. This was my first time going there, and we spent 13 hours at the park, tried as many food and rides as we could, and it was a magical experience. So let me tell you all about it. Today is Monday, May 15th, and we started the day by taking the train to Maihama Station and transferred to the Disney monorail, which took us to the entrance of Disney Sea. We got there at 8 a.m. sharp, even though the park opens at 9, but we wanted to be in line early. But as you can see, everyone else had the same idea too. So if you want to make the most out of your day, definitely go early. But it was nice because we actually ended up being let in about 15 minutes early. Once we got in, the first ride we went for was Soaring Fantastic Flight. And even though we went straight for this ride after entering, we still had to wait 70 minutes, which is actually on the shorter end. This one usually has a really long line because it's good for all ages and it's just a fun experience feeling like you're flying over the world. So there's always a long wait, like over two hours sometimes, I've heard. Then we went straight to Journey to the Center of the Earth. We got lucky since the ride was down earlier, but it had just opened up as we got out of Soaring. So we only waited five minutes. Minutes. This was such a fun ride. It also usually has a long wait time, but I definitely think it's worth it. Afterwards, we picked up a gyoza sausage bun at Nautilus Galley. The bread was soft and fluffy, and the inside was so nice and warm. It tasted just like a giant gyoza. It also kind of reminded me of a manapua, and if you're also from Hawaii, you know. Then we made our way to 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. You have to walk down this cool spiral walkway to get there, and the ride was really chill. It wasn't my favorite, but it's good if you just want something that's not a thrill ride. Something about Disney Sea that I noticed is that their headwear is next level. They don't just have the basic Minnie Mouse or Mickey Mouse ears like every other park. They have full body character hats and headbands. They even have full cover headgear. Like, they have the most unique selection of accessories I've ever seen, and I loved it so much. So, try to keep an eye out for all the different accessories you see people wearing throughout this video and comment which one is your favorite. Then we stopped by Yucatan Base Camp Grill and picked up these little green dumplings. They're the aliens from Toy Story and they're like little mochi pieces filled with strawberry, custard, and chocolate cream. They are so bouncy and chewy and the most adorable snack ever. All the flavors were great, but the custard one was definitely our favorite. This was really good and I would definitely recommend it. Next up, we got in line for Indiana Jones. This ride also had kind of a long wait, about 45 minutes, but it's a really fun one. Then we got another snack. We got the shrimp and chicken katsu roll from Bayside Takeout, and this was so good. The shrimp and chicken were kind of blended together into one big katsu roll, but it was so tasty and pretty filling too. Then we hopped on the electric railway from Port Discovery to the American waterfront. It basically just takes you from one side of the park to the other, and one really cute thing that I noticed is everyone here just waves at each other. Everyone. Like when we passed by this other train, people were waving at us. And everywhere you walk, the employees wave at you. And even people waiting in lines for rides will wave at you while you're in the ride getting ready to take off. It's just the cutest thing, and it's really hard to be in a bad mood when you're at Disney Sea. Then we wanted to watch the Big Band Beat Show, which is a swing jazz performance put on by Mickey and his friends. But we couldn't get tickets since it's a lottery system. But we happened to be in the area before the next show started. So we checked it out and they had a ton of walk in seats available. So luckily, we were able to grab a seat. The show was also really well done and it was all in English. So we were actually able to understand everything, which was nice. <laughs> The next thing we rode was the Tower of Terror, and this was actually my first time on it, and I hated it. <laughs> I hate drops, but this ride is so iconic, so I just wanted to try it once in my life. So I tried it, and yeah, unsurprisingly, I did not like it. <laughs> Then we stopped at Hudson River Harvest and tried this mango passion fruit sparkling soda. It was so yummy because mango and passion fruit are some of my favorite fruits, and it was just so light and refreshing. I also picked up this churro from High Tide Treats. It's just a cinnamon churro, but it's shaped like Mickey Mouse. How adorable! Then we stopped by for even more food at Refresco's. We got the Mickey Uki Waman bun, which has a really fluffy bread with chicken inside, and this was pretty good too. It's super cute because it's shaped like a life ring, and it has a 40 stamped on the ear because this year was actually Tokyo Disney Sea's 40th anniversary. So then we decided that's enough food for now, so we took a ride on the gondolas. And you guys, I have been to Venice, Italy, and I rode on a gondola there, but this gondola ride at Tokyo Disney Sea blew that one out of the water. This one was so much fun. Our gondoliers were so funny, and it was so cute because they tell you to wave and say ciao to other people passing by or to other boats. Oh. Oh. 
and literally everyone is just so kind and sweet and waves to everyone. It's just the cutest thing ever and really made my Disney experience so much better than the other parks I've been to. Then after that, we actually got more food. And this is probably my favorite thing that we ate all day. We went to Mama Biscotti's and got Mike's melon bread and a coffee tapioca latte. Now I love honeydew melon and Kyle loves coffee, so this was perfect for the both of us. And both of these items did not disappoint. The melon bread was so soft and the melon flavor was so strong. Plus it has a custardy melon cream inside, which just made everything so much better. And the latte had tapioca pearls and coffee jelly inside. The coffee flavor was nice and strong and it wasn't too sweet either. And I would say that if there's anything you need to get from Disney Sea, it would be these two items. Mama Biscotti's knows what's up. After that, we made our way to Toy Story Mania. This one had quite the wait, about an hour, but it is so much fun. Toy Story is one of my favorite Disney movies as well, and this ride is kind of like an arcade game where you sit two by two and shoot at a 3D screen. You use the little cannon contraption and play games like ring toss and hitting a bullseye to try and score points, and you're basically just competing with the person next to you. And I did end up winning at the last second. <laughs> There's also a ship that you can explore on the American waterfront, so we went on for a bit and apparently you can see Mount Fuji from it on a clear day, but it was too cloudy for us to see anything that day. At this point, it was about 5.30pm, so we were getting pretty tired, so we decided to rest our feet and grab dinner at Volcania Restaurant. We got spring rolls and mabo tofu with fried rice, and both of these were really yummy. I kind of wish the mabo tofu was a little bit spicier, but it was nice and flavorful, and the spring rolls were fresh and crispy, which I love. From where we were sitting at the restaurant, you could also see the drop on the journey to the center of the earth ride coming out of the volcano, and you can hear the people scream, so that was fun to watch. Then we did more exploring around Mermaid Lagoon and the Arabian coast. Both of these areas were so gorgeous, they're just so vibrant and colorful. And we also decided to ride on Jasmine's flying carpet, which was really fun. Then at around 7.30, we watched the Believe Sea of Dreams show. It's a musical dance show held in the water over the Mediterranean harbor, and it tells a story about making your dreams come true. It is told in Japanese though, so I could only understand a little bit, but even if you don't understand Japanese, the show itself is still incredible. It features characters from Moana, Tangled, Coco, Frozen, Aladdin, and a few others, but the bright lights, water effects, projections on the buildings, and the fireworks are all crazy. And they did a ton of mashups between popular songs from the movies and it sounded so good. It's a pretty long show too, about 30 minutes, and I'll be honest, my feet were hurting from having to stand and watch, especially since we had such a long day and we didn't have the best viewing angle, but regardless, it was still an amazing show. Before it started, I even wanted to just skip it and go home, but I'm so glad I didn't. After the Believe Sea of Dream show, we had some time before the fireworks, so we squeezed in one more ride on the merry-go-round. I had so much fun on this, I felt like a little kid again. And then of course, we ended the night with the fireworks show. We watched it from the lighthouse at the American waterfront, and it was a pretty good view. But if you want just as good of a view and some place to sit while you watch, I would try watching it from the ship. And that brings us to the end of our Disney Sea day. It was a long day, but such a worthwhile experience. I'm not even a huge Disney fan. I'm definitely not a Disney adult, but I had such a good time and so did Kyle. So if you can spend a full day at Disney Sea, definitely do it. And with that, I will see you tomorrow for day four in Tokyo.